Hello everyone, this is Suzanne at God Crochet and Chatter. How's everyone doing today? Today is Monday and it's another great day in the Lord. I am feeling pretty good. I just now took a pain pill. I went from bedtime all the way till 1230. That's really good to go without a pain pill. So I'm trying to wean myself off of them. I take one a couple of hours before my therapy, which will be at 2.30 p.m. today. So I'm excited about going there today. I was able to go for a long walk yesterday. I think we did a good mile and a half. And it felt really, really good again being outside after being cooped up in the house these, these past couple of months. But everything's on schedule and I'm keeping a positive attitude. And I know that now they're probably gonna start getting into more intense physical therapy in the next three or four days. And, uh, but you know, it's all for my good. And sometimes we have to look at pain as a lesson. Yeah, it doesn't sound right, does it? But yeah, through our pain, we can learn a lot. All right, today we have a great devotional. It is, receive the fear of the Lord. How many times have we heard that? Well, the fear of the Lord is mentioned 186 times in the Bible. Wow, that's a lot. A lot of people don't understand what that means. You mean I got to hover in a corner and be afraid, of, be afraid of him or he's going to punish me or hurt me? No, far from it. Far from it. Let's get to this. As the world continues to grow darker, let your heart receive the fear of the Lord, and it will be a fountain of life to you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and will lead you out of temptation's grip and help you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In the fear of the Lord, there is a strong confidence, and Father's mercy shall be with you even when you stumble and fall. I want to release the fear of the Lord into your heart and teach you to acknowledge me in all your ways. Release the fear of the Lord into my heart. Help me work out my salvation with fear and trembling. I refuse to compromise with the spirit of the world or bow down to the will of man. I choose to be a friend of God and walk in your statutes. Now, I went on gotquestions.org they always have a multitude of questions that are asked by people like you and me and they usually give really good answers I haven't found one that I disagree with yet so let's see what they have to say the Bible indeed does tell us to fear God that doesn't mean that we are to be in terror of him shrinking from him and even fleeing from him Although we should fear his judgment, although we should fear his judgment, but it does mean we are to have a reverence and respect for him, knowing that he is holy and powerful. What does it mean to have a fear of God? For the unbeliever, the fear of God is the fear of the judgment of God and eternal death, which is eternal separation from God. For the believer, the fear of God is something much different. The believer's fear is reverence of God. Hebrews 12, 28 through 29 is a good description of this. Therefore, since we are, rece since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is the consuming fire. This reverence is and awe are exactly what the fear of God means to Christians. This is a motivating factor for us to surrender to the creator of the universe. Proverb 1, 7 declares, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Until we understand who God is and develop a, rever a reverent fear of him, we cannot have true wisdom. True wisdom comes only from understanding who God is and that he is holy, just, and righteous. 
Deuteronomy 10, 12, and 20 through 21 records, And now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul? Fear the Lord your God and serve him. Hold fast to him and take oaths in his name. He is your praise. He is your God who performed for you those great and awesome wonders you saw with your own eyes. The fear of God is the basis for our walking in his ways, serving him, and yes, loving him. Some redefine the fear of God for believers to respecting him. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take a little drink here. <clears throat> While respect is definitely included in the concept of fearing God, there is more to it than that. A biblical fear of God for the believer includes understanding how much God hates sins and fearing his judgment on sin, even in the life of a believer. Hebrews 12, 5-11 describes God's discipline of the believer. While it is done in love, it is still a fearful thing. When we were children, the fear of discipline from our parents no doubt prevented some evil actions on our part. The same should be true in our relationship with God. We should fear his discipline and therefore seek to live our lives in a way that pleases him. Believers are not to be scared of God. Have you ever been scared of God? You know, in my early Christian days, I had to come to understand exactly what the fear of God meant. Just looking at it at face value, it didn't sound like that would be a loving God. But that's why we study and that's why we dig into the scriptures to get a true meaning of what some of these things mean. We have no reason to be scared of him. We have his promise that nothing can separate us from his love. We have his promise that he will never leave us or forsake us. Fearing God means having a reverence for him that greatly impacts the way we live. <clears throat> the fear of God is respecting him, obeying him, submitting to his discipline, and worshiping him in awe. Do you fear God? How do we fear God? Through studying his word. By repenting, confessing our sins, you know, being saved. We study his word. We respect his wisdom. We respect everything he's done for us. We are in great awe of his majesty. Our God is an awesome God. There's none other like him. And he loved us so much that, yes, Lord, I will honor you. I will fear you because you are a loving and just God. I will never turn my back on you. Forgive me of the times that I stumbled, dear Lord. I don't mean to, but Lord, you understand us. Even after we were saved, you, you still, by your grace, gives us always a way to come back to you. And we're so thankful for that. Heavenly Father, you are so wise and powerful and loving toward us. We fear you. We love you. We give you honor and praise every day. Please, Lord, bless our efforts. Know that we love you. And Holy Spirit, guide us into all things. Bring our memory back to the scriptures, things that we have learned. Nudge us when we're going in the wrong direction. We want to honor God every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I hope you enjoyed that devotional for today on fearing God. And perhaps that has helped all of us have that fear because fear is the beginning of knowledge. I think that's terrific. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm good. 
I am almost ready to start back on my knitting machine. Not quite there yet. I'm going to give it another two weeks because I have to sit and crank for quite a while. I can break it up, but I'm getting that urge again. I'm getting back in the saddle finally, and it feels great. I would ask that you pray for my husband, Ron. He has a horrible bad back. He's in tears some days. Um, he gets migraines. I massage his back twice a day. With, we have a pure wave massager we got off of Amazon. It's been a lifesaver for him. And I try to massage his back twice a day. That helps break that up. He's had injections. He's had all that stuff done. And um, some days are tougher than others with this chronic pain. Ouch. Sorry. These chronic pain issues. So... Sometimes we just have to keep praying and know that this will not last forever. All right, everyone. This is Suzanne. I'm going to leave off now. I've got a few other things to do before I go to physical therapy. You go out and make a blessed day in the Lord. Put a smile on your face and know that God is in control of your life. And he knows what he has planned for you. Bye for now.